Hey everyone, it's uh, Justin from Chit Talk here, and today I'm going to show you how to play the two to five player game Farlight, designed by Nick Sabicki and published by Game Salute. Uh, in Farlight, players take on the role of futuristic organizations set to explore, mine, and colonize space. Uh, through blind auctions, players will upgrade their ship, take on missions of increasing difficulty, uh, and activate abilities around Farlight Station. So let's take a look at the setup. Each player will start by selecting a corporation to play, as you can see that there are six included in the game. Take the primary core card, the five bidding tiles, a score marker, and the three crew from the supply, and place your primary core in front of you. This will be where you'll be building off of as you upgrade your ship. Next, shuffle the seven industry award tokens, and then you're going to reveal three of them onto the board in this little area. And then you can put the rest of these back in the box as they won't be needed in this game. Next, separate out and shuffle the climactic mission cards, which actually say climactic mission on the top of them, and then reveal three of them onto the table. This will form the bottom of your three mission stacks. Shuffle the remaining mission cards and deal two of them onto each stack in a two to three player game, or three of them onto each stack in a four to five player game. We're gonna set up for a three player game here. Display the cards out so that you can read the missions and their requirements at a glance. And then return all the unused missions to the box. Next, you're going to reorder the missions so that the lowest valued mission is on the top of the stack. And if there's a tie, you're going to go in alphabetical order. So we've got 7, 11, 17, 8, and 8, but this is a tie. This one right here starts with an I and comes before the O. And then next here, we've got 9 and 9 and that's D and then S. Shuffle the parts deck and place a part face up on each open slot on the board up to the current player count. You can see that you're always going to fill in this top row and this first space and then in a three player game you'll fill these two slots. In a four player game you would put one card here and in a five player game you would put two cards here. We're only setting up for a three player game so this is all we put out here. The youngest player then counts the engine icons among the parts on the board and rolls that many dice. The engine icons are these ones right here, and you can see that we have two. So we're going to roll two dice, and then you're going to match these dice with the numbers on here. You're going to take the highest number die, and you're going to place it on the highest number card. So I've got a four, I'm going to match that to the 60, and then I've got a two, and I'm going to match that to the 30. You're going to go on down the line and so on until you have matched all of the dice to the engine icons on the card. And then setup is complete. The player who lives farthest away takes the first player marker and play begins. Farlight is played over several turns made up of three rounds. First, the bidding phase, where players will place hidden bids on parts, missions, and facilities that grant special benefits. Then the assembly phase, where players will reveal the bids on the parts and the facilities, and then build their spacecraft and take their facility bonuses. And then there's the launch phase, where players will reveal their bids on the missions and gain the associated benefits and points. A game of Farlight ends at the end of any round where a climactic mission, these were these bottommost missions, was completed, or there are not enough parts to fill the station. Players will add points from the industry awards they fulfilled, plus one point for every three crew and science tokens rounded up. The bidding phase starts with the first player placing two bidding tokens face down on any part, facility, or mission. You may split your bid across two items or place both of your bids on the same item. This will continue around the table with everyone placing two in a turn until everyone has placed all five of their bidding tokens. Notice that you only have five bidding tokens, so on your last bid placement, you'll only be placing a single tile. If you're bidding on a mission, only the topmost mission is available until it's completed, at which point the next mission in the stack becomes available. Whenever you place a bid, you may also choose to place one crew from your supply on the tile. If you placed two tiles in the same place as we did here, you can still put one crew on each tile. You must place the crew in the same action that you place the bidding tile, and this will increase the value of your bid tile by one. After all players have placed their bids, move on to the assembly phase, which can be taken by all players simultaneously. Start by determining the winner for the parts. One at a time, reveal the bids and add the bidding tiles, plus one for every crew placed on the bidding tile. The winner of the bid is the player who played the highest value, with ties going to the first player, or the player who is closest in clockwise order to the, to the first player. The winning player retrieves their tiles from the part and places them in front of them. So let's say, for example, 
We have a one and a two for white and a one for yellow. So white would win this, they would retrieve the part and they would also retrieve their tiles. Make sure to leave this losing tile on here. In this instance, we've got purple playing a one and a two and we've got a three here from yellow. This is a tie, but yellow was our starting player. So this goes to yellow and yellow places them in front of them. In this instance here, white has won, but white has only placed a zero. This is an interesting rule here where you may never actually win a bid on a zero tile unless it's augmented by one crew there. Next, move on to the facilities. Winning a facility works the same way as the parts, except the winner will take the benefit of the facility. Here, the refit lets you discard any number of parts from your ship. Here, the hire will gain three crew. Here, the discover gains one science. And then finally, the engineer here lets a player increase an engine die in their ship by one, obviously to a maximum of six. I've gone ahead and revealed these bids now. And over here at the refit, we've got a three and a three plus one. So this one goes to white. Over here, yellow has completely overbid because nobody else is bidding with them. They've got four plus two plus one plus one. So that's a total of eight there. That obviously goes to yellow. They remove. And then finally over here, we've got the discover. We've got a tie with four and four with purple being the next in line to the first player, which was yellow. So the discover goes to purple. All players who lost bids on both parts and facilities will retrieve their bidding tiles plus one crew for every non-zero bidding tile they placed and lost with. So here we're taking back two tiles for purple and they will get two crew from the supply. Don't resolve any of the missions at this time. That'll happen during the launch phase. Next, players will install the parts they won in the previous step. Each player starts with a primary core that has four open connectors, up, down, left, and right. The parts you're installing will also have connectors, which will line up to open connectors on your craft. Some cards will also have a crew cost. Like this one, for example, has a crew cost of two, which must be paid to install the part. To install a part, simply match the card to an open connector. It's okay if it blocks another connector. It only needs to match up with at least one open connector. You'll see this as you start to build this out. Parts will also have a number of pips on the card up here in the top left. This indicates how many of this card exists in the game. If you want an engine, the die stays with it on the face that it was rolled earlier. When installing a part, you may not rotate that card in any way. Always orient parts according to the orientation of your primary core. Once a part has been placed, it can't be moved or removed unless a player discards it with the refit facility, which we saw earlier. After all parts have been placed, all players simultaneously receive benefits according to the icons on their ship. This lightning bolt here means that the effect is taken once on the same turn in which the part was installed and then never again. So this player, the yellow player, would take three crew immediately. This circle with the bolt means the player takes the benefit every turn. So every turn this player is also going to get one crew. For each science icon, gain one science token. For each crew icon, gain one crew. For each die with a plus one in it, like this card here, you can increase an engine die by one up to its max of six. For each die icon with a six in it, like this one here, you can overhaul an engine by increasing the die immediately to six. After all assembly is finished, move on to the launch phase, which is taken simultaneously by all players, same as the assembly phase. Starting with the lowest valued mission card, determine the winning bids, same as we did in the assembly phase. An important note here, any crew committed to missions are never retrieved as they are in the assembly phase. All crew committed to missions won or lost are returned to the supply and players do not receive crew for losing bids on missions. The player who bid highest may complete the mission if they wish. If they don't, the next highest bidder may complete the mission if they wish, and so on down the line. But the first player to complete the mission gets the full point value of the mission, so in this case, eight. After this, say purple completed the mission, white would be next in line. Any subsequent player to complete the mission will get half the mission value rounded up, so in this case, four. If at least one person completed the mission, discard that card to the box. Uncompleted missions remain in play, so these two would remain in play. To complete a mission, a player must also meet the requirements for the card, so it's entirely possible to bid on a mission when you couldn't complete it, hoping that you'll have met the requisites by the time this phase comes around. 
Some missions require that engines of a certain power be shown on the competing player's ship. Each requirement must be matched to a different die of equal or higher value. So for example, when completing this, you would need four different engines in your ship, all showing a value of three. Each requirement must be matched to a different die of equal or higher on the, uh, on the ship. This doesn't remove any dice from your craft. You must only have the die present. After meeting the requirement, the dice stay on your ship as is. Some missions will require biotech, that's this green icon here. To meet this requisite, you must show the appropriate number of biotech icons on your ship. As with engine dice, biotech is never spent and remains on your ship. Players may also spend three crew to increase their biotech by one for this mission only. They can do this as many times as they want on a single mission. So for example, they could spend nine crew to increase their biotech by three, but the temporary biotech goes away once the mission is resolved. Science, however, is spent. Missions requiring a certain number of science, this purple icon, must be spent from your pool. After all bids have been resolved for all missions, the round resets and you check for victory conditions. If one of these climactic missions was completed this round, proceed to end game scoring. Then place one crew token on each part still on the station. Parts may accumulate multiple crew over multiple rounds, and players will gain these when winning this part. Fill all empty part spaces on the board. If you run out of cards to fill the vacant spots, proceed to endgame scoring. Remove all engine dice from the board. Count up the number of engine icons now showing, so in this case we have two, and roll that number of dice and set the dice out as you did in the setup. Highest number of die matched to the highest engine value, second highest number on a die matched to the second highest engine, and so on until all dice are placed. So, the 5 goes with 70, and the 1 goes with 60. The first player marker passes to the left, and if neither endgame condition was met, you play another round. If a climactic mission wasn't accomplished, or there weren't enough parts to fill the space station during the refresh, move to endgame scoring. Players score the randomly chosen industry awards from the beginning of the game, then players add up the total number of crew and science they have and divide that number by 3 and round up the player scores this number of points. So for example, if you had a total of nine combined crew and science, you would divide that by three to get three points added onto your score at the end of the game. In the case of a tie, reveal one of the unchosen industry awards and the winning player who meets this requirement is the new winner. If there's still a tie, repeat that process until you do have a winner. If still tied after that, the victory is shared. And that's all you need to know to play Farlight. I hope that this video helped you skip the rules and jump right into the game. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. For more great content, check out chittalk.com, and we'll see you next time.